So welcome to this review of the new Honey Armoured Troop box set. This is uh, for uh, Midward Desert. Let's uh, first of all uh, see what's in the box. So, probably come uh, coming to be familiar with the contents of these new version 4 boxes. We've got the cards. Um, which are essential for your unit building, but also just very handy for statistics and special rules and such like. As you know, the new rule books are quite thin. You've also got the standard decals that you'll probably get in on all the British midwar boxes, and the standard uh, plastic crewmen, which are quite nice, nicely detailed, and plenty of character, including even some moustaches on these guys if you want to get that adventurous with your painting. And it's the cards. Let's have a quick peek at Annie's whilst we're here, folks. Um, let's see what the stats are. So, 3, 2, 1 for the armour. Confident, they're trained, but they're aggressive, so they're in a 3 plus. So, they're going to be getting hit left, right, and centre. Knocked out left, right, and centre as well, which may account for them being 5 points for 3. They've got an anti-tank of 7, which is alright if you're around the side of some tanks. A self-defence AA, no HE, 5 MG, so, um, so really, really quite good for shooting up those infantry. So, anyway, there's the cards. The most important thing though, it's going to be the sprues. Let's just have a look at one. So straight away you can see you've got two upper hulls, so you can make a honey or a stewart. You've got various um, options as well. You've got two different turrets depending on the different types. That'll be the uh, Honey and that'll be the Stuart. That's not too bad. There's two different options with mo molded um, turret open on the Stuart. Same again for the Honey. So we we'll need to try and glue on those little hatches that just won't stay on. There's two different gun types. To be honest, I'm not familiar with this one. The short barrel. Enlighten me in the comments, please, guys. What's the short barreled option? I'm thinking a Scott, but that may not be a different, probably even a different hull and, and everything. They're certainly a different turret. Um, you've got some nice storage here. You've got spare wheel, tarpaulin, boxes, jerry can. You've also got some storage tanks, some fuel. Fuel tanks, but I, I don't think those are a, a honey option. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. They might go on some honeys. That's certainly something I'll look at before I do any kind of assembly. You've got the size skirts for the honeys as well. So, all in all, I like the look of the kits. The um, the proportions, again, you see they're quite chunky. Uh, oops, I'm blocking it off there under the light. My apologies. They are quite chunky, so they're not going to break easy, and, and I like that. And these has their wargaming kits. The tracks are quite nicely detailed. The wheels got nice clear rims. And for a, a kit of this nature as well, of this period, the the uh, the bolts are um, or the rivets are all nicely detailed, so they can take a wash and a highlight. So generally speaking, I like the look of the sprues, they're in very good condition, lots of nice options for personalisation. So I will come back um, and show you the assembly, I'll put a couple together so I'm confident of any little problem areas you have to be aware of, and then the instructions themselves on assembly are on the back of the box, so it's nice and clear, unlike some internal photocopy sheets you can get in other boxes. This is nice and clear. So we just have to watch, see what goes together, any danger of any gaps, particularly front and back of the hull. So I'll come back when that process, um, uh, well, come back when I'm confident in that process and go through assembly step by step. Okay, so as far as construction goes, I've done a couple and this is what I find is the way to get the, the best 
fit is to put the top, bottom and rear bulkhead on first. Let that dry. I've also put the front plate on as well at this point, though it's not essential. Now this will allow a nice tight fit across here and a decent fit at the back as well. This is probably the most important joint though. Uh, I found that if you put the tracks on first, the, the, the main emphasis was trying to squeeze this into the tracks, whereas we want the tracks to fit into the hull. This one here, I had a few issues uh, and I had to use elastic bands to hold the front and sides of the hull on. And we don't want that, we just want to do one and another and another and another. So now that this is dried and in place, use the right one, we can put the tracks on and make sure when we're gluing it in place that we get the best fit for this important joint here. And then when it's dried up it would be possible to improve the fit on the front. You can see, I don't know if that's coming across, but there's a little bit of leeway in order to get that fit. So it may still need elastic bands, we shall see, but that is what you've got when the tracks are flush to the hull. You can easily fit a blade down there. So we'll have to do a little bit of work just to make sure that that gap is sealed and any other gaps are in much less important areas. So um, I'll crack on with that and once it's done the next step will be putting the side skirts on and you just got to be careful to get glue all the way along the length. That's what I'd recommend, just enough glue so you've got a nice good solid contact. Line them up nice and they actually go on quite good. No real problems there, that's really quite nice and neat. And the turret's really straightforward. Just be careful when you're trimming it. It's possible for plastic to peel away from this flat surface as the, the sort of the feeder, feeder marks on the sprues go right onto that top edge. So just be careful with that and get the orientation of your hatch correct. So that's very straightforward. So I'm just going to see what I can do with this side track, with this side piece rather. See if I can do it without the need for elastic bands. That approach certainly seems to have been quite easy and straightforward. I've got both of them on now, both sides. The left one went on easier than the right. There might be a slight deflection out of the way on the right one. It's possible to hold it in place. Just while the glue sets up. And that will take care of that. It's given a nice tight fit on those edges. So top, bottom, rear bulkhead first and then side panels and tracks all as one piece before moving on to the side skirts. You can put this front plate on at any time and that's basically once you've done the turret, which is really straightforward, that's basically your build done. Um, so, straightforward kits. Should not take you too long to get all of these ready for the next stage, which is painting. So, I shall be adding stowage before I start the painting. I'm not going to add the stowage exactly as it is on the sprue, you know, so each tank has got the exact same. I'll mess them about, change them around, so you've got a bit of variety uh, between the, the tanks. So we'll come back once it's done and I've uh, started the painting. So here the guys are after the first application of, um, well, modulation basically, if you're using the airbrush. Uh, a final note on construction, I ended up using elastic bands on all of them. Um, it was no no real delay. 
involved because I just put elastic bands on whilst I was assembling the turret and straight away when the turret was finished, which took no time really, I was able to move on uh, with the, uh, the process. So there you go, that's it. The first lot of modulation on. I will be strengthening it in places by brush. These are really quite small, small tanks with, I mean the turrets, you know, they're tiny, you know, so um, I find that I have to do some work by brush. It also, it will help me define some of the panel lines as well and also do a bit of fading down across uh, vertical um, and angled panels. But there you go, ready to get stuck in really to the painting. Right, that's these guys ready for a gloss varnish, so I can then do a pin wash. What I've done to get them to that stage is I've completed the the modulation, including some fading effects across panels. There's more on how I actually do that on how to paint Monty's Desert Rats and Rommel's Africa core box videos. You'll actually see me doing that. But it's a way of um, helping to unify the modulation and also just give a bit more uh, variety, so to speak, on the flat surfaces of the hull. So I've also painted all the tracks in running gear and that's, as always, a, a bit of a chore. And I painted the spare wheels as I was doing the wheels and also the uh, various tarps. Most of them are in locations where they're likely to receive a bit of wear, so I put the shade coat on them first. I will then varnish them so as a degree of protection, the matte varnish should help uh, protect against general wear and tear up with the um, the good solid coat of gloss varnish over the shade colour. I don't want to entirely paint them at this stage because they'll dull down considerably once that gloss varnish is on, that's something always to bear in mind that uh, varnish, particularly gloss varnish, tends to dull colours down. So we'll come back to these once I have varnished them. I'll put the decals on first actually. Um, well, so I'll varnish them, put the decals on and then I'll wash them. And once they're washed I'll be ready for all the various wear and tear that these guys need to have. That's going to be one of the main features of the um, the finished look on these guys. So there you go, on to the um, airbrush booth again. Just taking a quick minute to show you the difference between um, the washed and unwashed versions. These guys here have been pin washed. This guy is about to be pin washed. And you can see even with a pin wash the surface changes, you can be as careful as you want but it still darkens down and it's something that you should take into consideration when you're thinking about your base colours. I mean this guy does look quite bright but you get a much more deserty kind of yellow once that wash is in place. Now there's more details on how to wash, uh, do the pin washes on my How to Paint Monty Desert Rats and the Rommel Africa Core Box as well. There is, um, I don't want to repeat it in this video because you can easily pick it up in one of the episodes on either of those two. So there you go, I'm going to finish this last one. I'm going to put an enamel sand wash on the tracks and then it's on to the detailing and weathering. I want to take a moment to show you the, the kind of chipping process and how things look different um, across the process. So here we have a tank that said no chipping done at all. And here we have a tank where I've put the light chipping on. Now that's in the form of scratches, but it's also picking out edges, bolt heads, um, hinges panel lines and such likes. So it's also highlighting as well as scratching. So let's see. We go from this 
to this and you can see how it's given it a bit more shape and then to really bring things together I put a dark core in, um, in a lot of the scratches, not everything but in a lot of the scratches and the colour I've used incidentally for the light scratches is just a highlight colour uh, dark sand, the um, the basic colours of the tank have been toned down quite a lot by the the wash so it, it does appear as a highlight and then I've used um, US Olive Drab, that's 889, model colour 889 as the, um, the scratch colour. Normally I would use German Camel Black Brown but it's quite strong against such a, a light uh, tank so the, the Olive Drab works really well because it's a kind of um, dirty greyish kind of colour without being too grey. So that really, it really helps tie everything together when you bring it to that stage. The modulation, as you'll see as we go across here, begins to soften. And the surface becomes a bit more sort of tied together. So I'm going to carry on. I've got a little bit more scratching to do. Uh, these ones in the back are ready for the dark scratches and then it's on to storage and uh, other things to round the tanks off. So that's the detailing and chipping finished on these guys. I've added the 30 cals and I'll be adding a couple of uh, commanders next. The one final step before map varnish will be to Put some streaking on the hull. This will be using enamel uh, washes, but it's going to be very, very controlled. It's going to be a little streak here, a little streak there, and um, it, it, the the streaks can very, very easily overpower the the finished look. So I'll be looking to keep it very much under control. The matte varnish will also kind of like a filter in some respects it will help tie all of the the patina basically off the hull it will help, help tie it all together so the modulation and the streaking and such like all become basically one nice solid layer So there you go, on to the streaking and then it's time for commanders and matte varnish. So here's the completed unit. I've got the um, final weathering done and commanders in place and two of the vehicles with 30 cows mounted on each one. Just left a little look around them and you can hopefully see the various degrees of modulation on them. It's a bit more unified after that final uh, weathering and coat of varnish goes on them. I think they're really quite attractive kits. There's clear simplification, for instance on the rear, I think this may be some kind of air filter and uh, the bin, they, they don't contact with the, um, the fenders at all in, on the real vehicle, but it doesn't detract from what is a very useful, easy to build and nice to paint wargaming kit. I can imagine somebody having an absolute horde of these things charging across the, the desert. They don't cost a lot of points in the game at all. And if you do, hopefully this guide will give you some idea of how to go about painting them. Though, if it is an absolute horde, you might not want to do as much work on modulation. 
um, that might take forever but certainly you could still very quickly do uh, the weathering and the shading without taking on too much extra work so these guys are going off to join a fledgling desert rat force if what we found this interesting and useful uh, if you did please subscribe please leave comments down below and I shall look to keep these how-to videos coming over the next few months.